This podcast is a member of the Place to Be Nation family. Visit us at placetobenation.com, the only place to be in your pop culture world. Hey everybody, welcome to the uh, Place to Be Nation Sports Network 2.0. This is your host, the Cowboy, with my uh, partner in crime, John D'Amato. And we're here with, this week in the NFL, Week 5. John, how goes it? Very well. The autumn wind is upon us. And uh, the autumn wind is a Raider. Uh, It might might be the only time we can say that all year. The Raiders actually uh, got in the W column. A little bit of help. They got a little bit of help, a little bit of, you know, the, the, the type of thing that only happens to the Browns, that, that call reversal was, uh, was suspect, to say the least. But, yes, good for the Raiders. The Raiders are in the win column. And sorry we missed you guys last week. Um, traveling schedules. John and I are both pretty busy guys, and we just, we just couldn't make it work last week. But because of that, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be extra on point tonight. Am I right, John? Yeah, we're very busy. The only difference is you're busy uh, working, and uh, I'm busy uh, doing a whole lot of nothing. But uh, a whole yeah. lot of a self entertaining. Uh. I've been I've been on vacation all week, and I tell you, this not doing anything thing. I think you're onto something, John. I'm looking forward uh, the, to it. What, what do the kids call it? Living your best life. Uh, exactly. I, I, I could write the book on that. <laughs> Exactly. Good. Good for you, John. And, you know, the, the the beauty of it is, guys, that John doesn't have a whole lot going on other than just pouring through stats. He watches every minute of every game every week so he can bring that bring that wealth of knowledge to our show here. That's right. Every Wednesday uh, it's on display uh, with the Wednesday AM quarterback. Uh. I hear people are, are reading it, uh, taking like five, ten minutes of their week, uh, and they're reading it weekly. That's great. It, it, it's a great column. It's a great column. and we're, uh... it's, it's short and sweet. Uh, it's uh, just uh, the few things that stick out to me I uh, just spit out there. So I appreciate the, uh, the support. Yes, sir. So why don't, we get, why don't we get right into it here? We're taping on a, the Thursday night, about 7.25 Eastern time, so – about an hour away from hopefully another thunderous Patriots victory. Yes, yeah, so by the time it kicks off, uh, four more uh, Colts will go on the IR, uh, or at least uh, will be inactive for the game. Uh, it's a tough. It's a tough week for the Colts. I mean, they they were coming into Foxborough is never easy, and you know, pretty much their whole offense is <laughs> is injured. Yeah, I, I hate to beat the dead horse. I, I, I'm sorry if I repeat myself, but the, these Thursday games uh, are so slanted towards the the home team. I foolishly uh, last week I picked the – well, it wasn't that foolish. The Vikings actually hung in there and gave the Rams a good game. But but, but these games are, ju- are just so – it's just so favor the home teams. Agreed. Agreed. Great segue though. What a game that was, huh? Vikings-Rams. Rams, Rams uh, getting it done, 38-31. And, uh, you know, the, o- the other thing that Thursday night has kind of become known for is for like defensive slogs. And this was anything but that. Both offenses, huge, huge games. This Rams offense looks really, really, uh, really, really a Cadillac offense. What were your thoughts there? Oh, well, first of all, overall, it's a big difference. Uh, the, the Thursday night games last year were horrific. Uh, the, there were some disasters. And I, th- I think they made a little extra effort going to Fox and uh, with picking up the slate. And also with the improved teams. Like uh, even going back, we, we missed uh, you know our show last week. But going back, that Jets uh, Browns game was uh, was a thriller. I really I really dug that game. That was, and and Baker, it a, yeah, yeah, not just Baker, but the the the, the Jets put on an, an exciting game. Uh, you know, two teams that that take a lot of shit for uh, you know being the laughing stock, but but they put on a great game. And then and then going back to last week, yeah, just, just an offensive show with with the Rams and uh, and Cousins came out firing. Uh, they were very impressive, but Zimmer's uh, defense uh, got shredded, and uh, and and he's in there for Vikings uh, as a coach. When uh, when your specialty uh, pulls a flat line like that, then then 
the, that's the first time there's got to be some questions about uh, Zimmer. He's he's been uh, having a lot of success since he came in, but him and a few other coaches around the league that are known for their defense. Well, when that's your specialty and and your uh, and your defense gets shredded, then that that's a red flag. Agreed, and and very disappointing start for the Vikings, sitting at one two and one. They seem like a better team than that. Um, I've seen uh, I've seen some of the some of the old Washington folks talking about you know cousins <laughs> cousins kind of being uh, just good enough to lose, and he always turns it over at the end. I thought he played great, but he did turn it over at the end. Don't know how much of it was his uh, was his fault, but the um, from a defensive standpoint. The Vikings really missed Everson Griffin. We hope he uh, he gets well soon because obviously there's something uh, something going on there. But in general, this Rams offense, I don't know if anyone can stop them. I mean, they, they are really clicking on all cylinders, and Goff seems to be the perfect, kind of the perfect quarterback for that McVay system. And, I mean, their weapons are, are incredible and kind of tough to not call them your, your Super Bowl favorite at this point. I know it's early and anything can happen. Yeah, definitely in the NFC. Uh, I mean, what could stop them from getting the number one seed uh, at this point? Even after just four weeks, you could, they've pretty much uh, got it not not sewn up. But it, it'll it'll take a really big surprise for, if they don't get the number one seed, uh, an avalanche of injuries or something. Yeah, I mean, the other teams three and one are the the Saints. Oh, they're capable. And then the Bears. The Bears look good. Bears look good. We'll have to we'll have to talk about them too. What's up with all the six touchdown pass, four hundred and fifty yard games? <laughs> I think it's the uh, I think it's the rules. I think it's the rules. It's the rules, and it's the poor defenses. Uh, you talk about uh, teams like Tampa Bay, which uh, has absolutely no uh, defense. And uh, the, that that uh, that Raiders Browns game, they were just going up and down in the field to see uh, without any stops. And also the uh, the Chargers Forty Nine ers. There's just uh, the, there's so many teams that uh, I don't know if it's the rules, the injuries. Uh, the, the, it's not just one thing, but it, it's definitely uh, a favor towards the offense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're seeing offense like, and I know, I mean, it's kind of trended this way for a while, but we're seeing offense really this year. It's particularly passing offense where the numbers are just completely out of this world. So I, it makes the games fun to watch. I'll say that. <laughs> and, um, I, I think it kind of like, well, the NBA did something similar, right? With, uh, with the hand check rule after, after the, the heat and, and your Knicks kind of set basketball back 50 years in the, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, no one wants to see any 75-74 playoff games. Yes, unfortunately, that was the last time they were the Knicks were contenders uh, when they played that style of ball. But uh, that, that's another subject. But uh, yeah, yeah, it looked like the the Broncos. It looks like they had Mahomes in check for uh, about two and a half quarters. But but even they couldn't keep that up. After a while, it's just it's just it's either the the greatness or the talent uh, of the the amazing greatness uh, wins out. Yeah, and we're we're gonna get to Mahomes. That's one of our uh, that should be one of our one of our topics that we discuss here. So yeah, agreed right. on the Rams in the in the driver's seat for the number one seed. Um, got you know obviously injuries can happen to anyone, but I think that's probably about the only way the only way they don't get it. Just based on based on one, they're a great team, and two, their division is so god awful. Besides yeah. them, that. I mean, they have a pretty even for a for a you know for a better team, they have a pretty easy schedule. Having to play uh, those those you know, it's essentially six uh, six guaranteed wins. I think. <laughs> and, and also, and one last thing on that, what stood out on that last drive was, uh, I, I guess, it got to be kudos to the to the coaching staff how they uh, how, how the linemen when, when they were sacking Cousins, how they threw them away and they made sure not to to put any weight on them, you know, for these new rules and they made sure to stay away from the penalties. It was, it was like they, they threw them, they, they threw, they threw them away like 10 yards away and, and to make sure not to land on them. That, that's either good, that's good coaching that shows they're paying attention not to make the same. I, I won't even call them mistakes because just, just to uh, kind of get in gear with the, with the new way of uh, tackling the new football, not, not to shit on like green band teams that got heavily penalized for it, but they're, they're, they, it just shows that they're aware of, 
of, of the new uh, system that's going on, and, and, and they made sure that they weren't going to let the refs screw them out of that game. Extremely well coached, and that's with, uh, that's with Sue. And so. Donald, yeah, <laughs> guys who are a little shaky with the, uh, yeah. So. so if you if you could control Sue, yeah, that should that that should be uh, coach of the year right there, regardless of record. But yeah, they're 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 a force on both sides of the ball. I mean, their defense their defense actually showed some, you know, showed some vulnerability. But I chalked uh, some of I, that up to the, I mean, a lot of it up to the the you know Talib being hurt and. Peters was playing hurt. He played really good, but he, but he was playing hurt. Right, but yeah, but Thielen and Diggs are a, a dynamic duo. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then you know, the Vikings not really uh, not really getting easier for them with uh, with Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook appears to have you know tweaked tweaked the hammy again. He hasn't practiced at all this week. He's probably you know good chance he doesn't play. And they're going into Philadelphia. Which is no easy game, especially with the Eagles coming off uh, a game that w- we'll, we'll talk about that game next. Um, yeah, there's there, there's no sort, there's no any kind, there's not any kind of balance in the Vikings offense. It was all after the second quarter is passing every down. So. Yeah, Latavius Murray is not a yeah, not, once not once a the feature weather back. once the weather turns, you, you're not gonna be able to win like that. And, and the, not that they're winning anyway, so it's, uh, it's tough sledding, tough sledding. So let's t- let's talk next. I just mentioned them. The Eagles go into Tennessee and lose a uh, lose a heartbreaker with sure. uh, Mariota hitting Corey Davis right before the uh, right before the end of overtime for the twenty six twenty three victory. Really, really exciting game. So I, I want to talk about both of these teams, but first the uh, the Titans. You want? I mean, I think they like, like they they're kind of the antithesis to everything we just said about a lot of offense and the games are fun to <laughs> fun to watch. I mean, their their games are terrible to watch, but they're well coached. They play good defense. They control the ball, and they seem to they find a way to win. It's it's like one of these teams where it seems like the the sum the sum of the parts is kind of greater than. Than the parts, at least thus far, with them sitting at three and one. They, I know, I believe in our preview show, I mentioned that I, I was high on them, but it was it's kind of the way they have looked. I mean, they're, they're, it's a surprise to me that they're three and one. Um, do you think they can keep it up? Oh, definitely. I, I had them as a as a wild card, and uh, but but actually, uh, Nick had brought it up in the uh, in a preview. How I mean, here's Mariotti. He's a, he's a top draft pick and. He he makes he makes some spectacular plays, and then on the other hand, he just looks god awful. He's 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 one of the most inconsistent players, like within game. I mean, most of the time he gets the job done, but he he, he on on one hand he, he looks he looks great, and then on the other hand, he, he so he's keeping them from putting more points on the board. But they definitely they got a solid defense, and it looks like Vrabel's got a got a got a good kind of attitude. Uh, where, where, they're, where they're all in, you know, I, I mean, it's easy for a, a coach can't just go out there and say, okay, we're going to, we're going to be bold and ballsy and we're going to go for it on fourth down every time, even when it's, you know, fourth or 20 in our own territory. You have to, you also have to be smart about it. So, but, but it, right, right now he's got the team behind him and, and, and a good, and he's got a good attitude and, and, and the team's all in on him. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with you on Mariota, but I mean, if you watched this game, I mean, I think this is the best game he's ever played as a pro because Philly's defense is no joke, and he really, he really shredded them. And that that drive in overtime was really, really impressive. So it was. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't like I don't like to shit on uh, on officiating because because it's a it's a tough job, but. But Philly got a rough whistle, and this is from from a you know obviously a Giant fan and an Eagles hater. I, I gotta I, I gotta you gotta be honest, man. If, if anybody should could cry about the refs uh, on Sunday, it was Philly. They got a, they had the game in hand uh, on a couple of those third and fourth down plays where, and, and they got hit with some tic tic tacky uh, interference and holding uh, calls. Little home cooking. Yeah, but but then again, if you show on a replay. It, and now anything's a fan. You just can't put your hands on, on a receiver at all. But the, 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 at certain times of the game, the, the refs got to keep the flag in the pocket if it has no effect on the play. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I, I'm a proponent of that as well, and I, and I do agree with you. But with all that said, <clears throat> still a good drive at the end of the game for Mariota. Sure. <laughs> the um, the Eagles, on the other hand, they fall to two and two. Like I said, kind of a crossroads game this week. So, oh, but for what it's worth, Tennessee goes to Buffalo this week for what sh- you know. You never know, but what should be a victory to put them up to a four and one um, if they can win that one. The Eagles, like as we mentioned, kind of a crossroads game with them and the Vikings. It's really probably a more of a must win for the Vikings, but you can make the argument it's a must win for the Eagles as well. They don't want to be two and three. They're home. Yeah, I, I, no, it's definitely uh, definitely more of a must for the Vikings. Uh, the Eagles. It, it looks like the the East isn't too uh, strong, and uh, that uh, a a nine or seven or a ten and six might might take that division. So that the Eagles could 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 afford it, but. I don't think so. I would actually, I would lean towards the Eagles, but the the, the, the desperation factor has to be more on the the Vikings. They, they can't fold a one or four. That that Buffalo game was a killer for them because because that was a that was a bye week and the, that they turned down. So that that's turned they, out to be a real killer. I think they thought it was a bye week, John. Yeah, well, I've uh, never, Sean, I mean, Sean, Mc, Sean McDermott had a different uh, different ideas than Josh Allen. The survivor pool killer. That's what that yeah. game was. It was. Uh, <laughs> I know we didn't we didn't have a show last week, but I was. Um, I had mentioned oh, yeah. I was going to be in Florida, so I was at the uh, I was at the uh, NBC Sports Zone in, in Universal by myself watching the games, and the place was just in dis- disbelief. Like you yep. kept you kept waiting for Minnesota to, for the, yeah, for the, the light to click the... on, and right. they just slept walk. I mean they they read the press clippings. It was. I mean that that that. That's an indictment on the coach. You'll never see, I don't want to say a Belichick coach team, but a, a good, a well-coached team right. go in and lay an egg like that. It's, um, that, yeah. that's. An and also, and also the, the cousins detractors too, uh, cause, cause, cause a couple of, he gave them 14 points with a, with a couple of fumbles, uh, in his own, in his own territory right away. So the cousins detractors had a field day too. And, and that was right after he, he he led them to to a comeback with Green Bay in a game that they they, they should have won. They only got the tie because of the the kicking issues. So the, the, that's the you know the, the cousins. If you want to make all that money uh, and say you like that, you got to uh, you got to <laughs> br- bring you got to bring it every week. Uh, I don't think his fans like that too much. Uh. <laughs> brutal. It's a yeah. brutal loss. Yeah. All right, moving on. So we had a battle for. Uh, Battle in the a- in the AFC East last week, where uh, you want yeah, to call the, that a battle? <laughs> the three and O Dolphins went in to take yeah. on the one and two Patriots, and right, if the Dolphins game, could, that was that was that was the, that was the, the most easiest. Uh, I mean, I hate be playing Nostradamus with all the with all the predictions, but that was the easiest game to call uh, last week. Uh, and you know, predictable, the funny, predictable result. Uh, the funny thing is here in in. Here in in New England, and I mean I can tell you we we, as I said, we we didn't have a show, but I was a little the way they played against Detroit it was was ugly. It was that was a really ugly game. Yeah, it's rare where they where they lose two in a row, but 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 to 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 lose three in a row at home to Miami it wasn't there was no win not not, not from this opinion, but I I can, I can imagine that you know the sky was falling in New England. Oh, it was. Well. It was. Lost two in a row by more than ten points for the first time in like fifteen years. You know, it's true. It's true. I'm but sure, you know, but they, uh, I think uh, Dan McGinn was going to burn his uh, McCordy jersey. Uh, <laughs> you know. But in in all seriousness, it was I think the way the Patriots won was kind of how they had to win that game. They um. Dominant, they, yeah. They yeah. needed they needed confidence. They looked like shit against against the Lions. I don't know if Belichick was throwing our boy Maddie Patricia a bone, but I mean that was really really ugly. But they came out and for the first time all year, really, they looked like the Patriots. Miami, Miami, uh, certainly helped by just playing terribly. But I think they found something. I think it might have been kind of addition by subtraction with Rex Burkhead going down because. You know, it, it's tough for anyone to get a real, um, you know, especially running backs. Running backs need carries and need work to kind of get going. Yeah. And BB B, B, B doesn't play, bro. Doesn't really play rookies too much. You got to, you got to earn his trust. But uh, he, he had no choice to put him in there. Right, and I think like, 
In it could, I, I would say the same thing if Michelle went down. I think either guy would be better with 20 carries than 10 each. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, and that's, then, that's, not, that's not his style, though. But just me. He might, have to, he might have to change his ways for a while. Uh, he might have to change his... His his long his long ways and and also I've been a detractor but uh, Josh Gordon gave him a nice spark uh, in there. Yeah, and he didn't play that plays, much. Didn't, yeah, but but the, the the plays he made were very dynamic near the goal line. That gave that gave a real that gave a real boost. Yeah, just, like just somebody to come in and is to be a threat downfield is huge. And now Edelman's back tonight. Ah, uh, yeah. So that. That that's going to do wonders for the offense. The arrows pointing up. Um, I know they're a game back, but I mean, with the way the the AFC East is, looks similar to the kind of the Rams situation. In the Ed, Ed, Edelman's going to do wonders for uh, for for Chris Hogan because who showed that he's he's nowhere near a number one receiver, but he, he he's one of those guys that, that could be one of the best number two or three receivers in the league. Yeah, and it's like people always, when when Edelman's out, that they, they kind of assume Hogan's going to step into that role, but he's not a, he's not, he's not a slot receiver. He's right. uh, he's an outside receiver. He, he's not comfortable in the slot. But I think you'll see, th- this looks more like uh, like your standard Patriots team where they're, they're going to spread it around. Hogan will have some big games. I think Gordon will have some big games. Edelman and James White will be your steady Eddies. And, yeah, Michelle looks like a real talent. So again, even it's tough to say a game back, a game back that you're, you know, you're like a lock to win the division. But I think Miami showed they're not very good. And I, I was told to go on record for our good friend, uh, our good friend and host of Place to Be podcast, JT uh, Justin. <laughs> Justin wrote into the uh, wrote into the uh, the tip line for uh, for this week in the NFL and wanted it on record that he uh, he predicts the Dolphins to finish the season at five and eleven. So Justin, consider it noted. We've also forwarded it to freezing cold takes. Let let's see the, uh, that that's a tough one. They they still have uh, two with Buffalo, so you, you figure they're gonna get one of those. And uh, they usually split with the Jets. They already got their Jet game, so we'll give the Jets the other one. And uh, looking on the schedule, uh, Mr. Rosero is uh, looking good because I see a lot of that Minnesota, a lot of that Green Bays. I see a lot of automatic L's so. at Cincinnati. So that that would be a good call by Mr. Rosero. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like I like, I like, I like uh, him will, being willing to go out on the ledge, you know, strike that Dolphins team down. Uh, hopefully he's not out on the ledge watching his Jets uh, because he might jump. <laughs> yes, yes. The uh, the Jets the Jets were supposed to you know they they looked pretty feisty week one, but it has been it's been downhill for them since then. I mean Darnold's a kid. I think that's what it comes down to. Darnold's a kid and he doesn't have a lot of weapons around him, and they need you know they're they're a year or two away. I still think. Oh yeah, no, this is this a house money year. I'm sure they they weren't expecting uh, that much. Just development of Darnold, but it has to be disappointing though that their defense has come up short. And that's uh, once again it goes back to another one of those coaches that Bowles. He's a he's a defensive guy, and and if you're a head coach and and your specialty is defense and and your defense is, is crapping out, then you know there's only one there's only one thing, and that's the next step, and that's you know. See you later. New, yeah, 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 he's but, gone. I mean, I think he's well. No, nah, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be definitive like that. But that 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 that's one of the uh, red flags. Uh. You you heard it here first. If they lose to the Broncos this week, I don't think Bulls is coaching them in Week Six. That's nah, they, they're not gonna do it. I wouldn't do it in season. I, I don't see it in season. I think they're doing it in season, John. All right, all right. Hey, it's another bold You're- prediction. You heard it first. Nostradamus, as you say. Oh, my God. Nostradufus is right here, but yeah, you're better with those. And then from, uh, from the Pats to, to our other hometown team here, Saints Giants. We'll talk, talk Saints Giants. So, uh, Do we have to? The Saints look good. They get Mark Ingram back this week. The offense already clicking pretty well. Kamar is amazing, isn't he? Yes, uh, no, definitely. No, in all seriousness, the Saints uh, also their their defense either stepped up or or maybe it was because of the uh, incompetence of the Giants. But the the, the Saints defense was getting tore up uh, the first three games, and uh, and and they they stepped up, came up with a pass rush, and they stopped the run. They they didn't let Barkley get out of control. So maybe their defense is uh, turning a corner. 
Yeah, I mean, their defense was good last year, and I mean they were yeah, was, they were awful them. the first the first three yeah. games, but I, I they was, did play I was better in this them one. To be improved, sure. The, the fact that I mean, I think it, the, the, they were getting killed with big plays. And I, I, I'm not trolling you or anything, but the fact that Eli is unwilling to throw it more than seven or eight yards downfield. Nah, it's the truth. I could take it. It's, might it's, it's might no have some, you know, I think, yeah, you know, sure. I think, I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, you, got, you gotta just, take, you just, gotta take shots. You gotta take shots, especially with the, with the, with the guys you have. You know, you can't have Sterling Shepard leading the team in receiving every week, averaging eight yards a catch. Yeah, or the or the two yard Barkley uh, checkdowns, yeah. but yeah, no, I, I think it's just a culmination of uh, the hits over the years that uh, he's kind of shell shocked now, and it's, it's it's just not working out. And you're seeing Beckham with the, showing a lot of frustration, but the, the the tough thing is I don't really know what the solution is. I mean, you can't. Their backup is the rookie, right, from this year's draft. Oh yeah, there's not there's no way uh, there, there's no solution as far as a. Uh, Another play, you know, another quarterback. That's that's not going to happen this year. You just got to hope the light goes on because it's, you know. Yeah, but also the see the thing is that they, they got to help him out. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an Eli defender, but, but they got to help him out with once in a while some short fields. Their return game is horrific. They 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 just signed another guy. They're going to have like their their fifth uh, kickoff returner in five games. Their their defense is not getting any penalties, and and also their defense is, is giving up a lot of field goals and a lot and a lot of yardage and then keeping them in in deep uh in deep zones where eli's got to go 80 90 yards uh, give, give him a little turnover give him a short field once in a while uh, and, and maybe uh things will open up uh, that's about the only hope like we saw in uh in his brother's uh last couple of years where he barely had to do anything at, at least the, you know the defense helped helped him out yeah i mean that was a great defense i mean if the giants sure. could you know come up to Average it would be helpful in the line. The line's obviously a problem. Um, does not going to yeah. get any easier this week, unfortunately. Going to Carolina, yeah, well, Carolina off a of bye week. Uh, there's definitely uh, not definitely not things aren't looking up. And and even in the one game they won versus Houston, uh, JJ Watt still had a yeah, they still had set a free pass, a three pass to the quarterback for three sacks. So it's, right, and he hadn't had a sack since it's rough last see, October, the, I don't think. But the thing with Eli, it's not so much an age thing. That's always how he's been. Now he still makes a couple beautiful throws, and then there, there are some throws that are off, and 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 also, and he, like you said, he's not willing to. Ha- he hasn't been willing to hang in there and, and look for the deep and look for the big bombs. Yeah, I mean that's the thing with Beckham. I mean, you got to at one point or another, you just got to. You just got to give them a chance, you know. Yeah, because it's... they can't stop them. There was the, <laughs> there was the, the first game in Jacksonville where, where they were just throwing it up and they can't stop. Them. They, he got like two or three penalties in a row. So, wor- worse comes to work. You, you, you tell him to go long and he'll at least draw a penalty. Yeah, I mean he's he's one of the three three or four best receivers in the whole NFL. It's a, it's it's criminal the way he's being used now. But hopefully, I mean hope I'm, I'm sure I'm sure that we're not the only ones saying this. So hopefully, yeah, we got to give. With, with new coaches, you got to give them. A, you got to give them not so much a pass, but in the first year, you got to you got to let them work things out. And some some coaches, you know, don't just step in there and and dazzle you to the, the first few games. Sherman's still feeling his way along. Uh, plus, this roster's been turned over like th- three quarters for, from last year's disaster. So you can't just bring in uh, a half of a new team and three quarters of a new team. Uh, as, as as like I said before, they they got guys that that are. Uh, they got they have a new kick returner every week, and they're shuffling guys in and out of the offensive line. So it's it's a work in progress. Agreed. All right, moving on. We had the Sunday night tilt. Good ga- good first half, and then uh, the Ravens just beat beat the hell out of the Steelers in the second half. Really impressive performance by their defense. I mean, the the, the Steelers offense did nothing, and I mean, just yeah, also, nothing in the second half. And Joe Cool, Joe Cool played great as well, and has and has all season. They look a uh, they they look for real. I think the Steelers will be all right, especially hearing hearing bells coming back uh, week seven. Um, what were your thoughts on this one? Yeah, the the Steelers defense got torqued. They gave up like 14 points in the first like two minutes, but after that, the, the defense kind of buckled down and, and and they gave 
they gave the offense a chance. Uh, but Big Ben was, was uh, speaking about being inaccurate too. He was he was missing. He was doing some horrible throws, missing some targets, uh, wide open targets. Yeah, which was I shocking. Mean, and I mean, he had that. I, he just had an off night. I mean, which doesn't usually happen to him at home, but. He had the ball. The ball slipped out of his hands like three or four times. I mean, he does those pump fakes, and yeah. he just couldn't hold on to it. And, yeah, the uh, defense finally buckled down and, and stopped the stopped them a few times, which is which was which was the first time all year where they where they they had made some stops. They they actually forced the Ravens punter to get some work, and but but I put that one on 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 Big Ben. He was he he was a little off, and he he seems like it is not much. Uh, uh, chemistry with Antonio Brown so far this year. Yeah, they looked a little better in this one. They had a nice touchdown, a couple of nice plays, but still, yeah, to your point, he seems to be, you know, Juju seems to be more and more his guy. I mean, I think, I think the overarching theme is that they miss Bell. Oh yeah, there's no running threat whatsoever. Uh, well, and, and him that, out of the backfield. I mean, Con- Connor's not a bad player, but Bell. Yeah, is, is kind of, you know Bell's right up there with I mean he's him and Gurley right are probably right. the two best running backs in the NFL and Kamara obviously is a different kind of guy but the um you know just the the the, the you know the threat of the run and then the threat of the screen pass I think opens up the whole offense so they have a you know what should be what should be the the shootout of the week we have Atlanta going to Pittsburgh the Falcons. A team we both like, sitting at one and three, after um, another after a heartbreaker to the Bengals. You time for credit on the Bengals prediction yet? Are we? Are we, yeah. are we there? Are we there? Uh, we're, we're getting close, uh, and unfortunately, my horrible uh, Falcons uh, prediction. I was I was hoping you would mention that, but, but yeah, the, the Atlanta's really let me down as a as a soft team, and, and uh, hate to, hate to repeat uh, the, the the theme, but. Quinn, defensive guy, and uh, his defense is falling apart. Can't stop anybody uh, late in the game. Injuries, so, I think injury. I mean injuries on that. Ah, but, but even but but you've seen us the last couple of years. Uh, you know with Atlanta bringing <laughs> blowing leads. It, it's like at what point w- when you have the lead, do you just do you just stay back and and rush the four exhausted uh, defensive linemen? At some point, you got to throw in a blitz. Uh, you got to change the. Uh, you got to change the scheme or, or something. You can't just keep doing the same thing. Otherwise, you're going to keep getting the same result. And unfortunately, the the, the same results going to end up in uh, uh, coaching diff- difficulties. At what point do we say Andy Dalton's one of the ten best quarterbacks in the NFL? Uh, ten, ten might be a little. <laughs> He's been great. I mean, I, 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 may, mean, I may go for fifteen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he has been great this. But year. But the thing is, kind of like uh, in the Mariota thing, within the, within the same game, he'll throw one or two horrific interceptions a week, and that's when. The uh, detractors will come out and, uh, and and really throw the shit on him, uh, you know. But but that, that's the thing; it, it, it's one or two. But overall, he's he, he's definitely uh, above average, and he gets results. Yeah, I mean that that division, the um, the Bengals division, is um, looking like the strongest division in football. Who would have who would have thought that coming yeah, into the, the season? With the Browns, uh, much improved. Uh, the and, Browns and, could and, be four and zero. Oh. Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they had the Saints, and they and they, they, I'm sorry. And they had the Raiders too. That yeah, that 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 spot, and uh, that and that was uh, just that was re- ridiculous how that game turned around. I don't know. I don't know. I still don't understand how they lost that game. It's tough. Yeah, and play, well, with the Bengals, uh, uh, Mont- Montez Perfect is coming back this week. That's a big boost for their defense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows how long he'll be out there, but. But before he before he does before he does something to uh, to get suspended again, but he's a great player. He's a great player when he when he plays. But yeah, with the Browns, I mean, you you could make a legitimate argument right now that the Steelers are the worst team in that division. Oh, that, the the first four games definitely. And um, uh, I mean, even the one game uh, they they won in Tampa, that was just, you know that was because Fitz tragic had handed them like twenty one points. What did you think of? Um, Speaking about, what do you think of the Bucks paying all that lip service to, you know, Jameis isn't going to be the starter? <laughs> Fitzpatrick, uh, Fitzpatrick, first guy in NFL history to throw for 400 yards for the first three games of the season. <laughs> and then a bad half, and it's over. It's done. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was a tragically bad half. It was 38-3 to three at halftime. 
No, the the Steeler game uh, too. It wasn't just one bad half. He he, he gave. He, the thing is, he got praised. Oh, he almost came back versus Steelers. Yeah, the 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 reason why they were down so much is because of his turnovers. That's why he, he caused the, them to he caused the Steelers to get that big lead. So yeah, that wasn't gonna. I, I never bought into that, but if they were four and zero, that would it would be hard to make that switch. But it, it, it's easy decision. Agreed. Agreed. And we were we were kind of on there at that Fitzpatrick's done this before in his career. Oh yeah. yeah. Don't put too much stock into it. But um, I mean that that, that was a bad loss. I mean they made oh, yeah. Trubisky well, look tragic. like uh, the, 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 <laughs> look like Johnny anybody? Unitas. Can Bucks, yeah, can the Bucks stop anybody? Speaking of tragic, uh, you know, I hate to say I told you so, but getting uh, JPP wasn't going to turn your defense around. Uh, Pierre Paul, he's kind of been uh, skating by. Uh, I, I saw the last few years with the Giants, uh, even with even with five fingers, he he takes plays off. He's uh, he, he's not a big time player anymore. A little bit he, of a he, prima donna too. A little oh, bit yeah, of a definitely. prima donna. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but speaking, you know, the, the, on one side of the ball there, you have JPP. On the other side of the ball, Khalil Mack. And wow. We talked wow. here. We, we, we talked here about how ridiculous that was. And um, we're proven right. I mean, he's, he's, he's probably – I mean, I don't, they don't usually give it to defensive guys, but I think through four games, I mean, I, I, I would be comfortable saying either him or Mahomes are the NFL MVP. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Like you said, it's tough to give it to a defensive guy, especially when, when Mahomes is so incredible. But it's, all, it's only after four games. But he's, he's turned uh, Chicago around into a legit contender. Yeah, and, you know, there was some – there was some a little, little bit of hype in the preseason that we talked about with the Nagy coming in, new coach, new offense. Could they be this year's Rams? And before this game, which I'm going to need to see Trubisky do it again. He doesn't have to do that again, but he did not look good the first three games. And then the, the Bucks defense might as well have not even been on the field. But through the first through the first uh, four games, it's really on the defensive end. That they're oh yeah that yeah, they so have... Nagy's and it's kind of the other way around right Nagy's an offensive genius but just bringing that guy in and adding him to their young core that they already have have made them one you know one of the best defenses in the league and the offense is just good enough to uh, to get it done yeah they could have had that Green Bay game if uh, if the quarterback would have would have made a couple more plays got a couple more first downs they they could have kept that. Uh, they could have kept that comeback, that Rogers' uh, famous comeback from uh, happening. But, but, it, but he's he's young and still learning. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's just what you saw with uh, with the Rams last year, where where Goff went from looking like he didn't, you know, would play, play it for Jeff yeah, Fisher, sure to look, McKay, looking like he didn't, McVay, even, didn't sure. like he never picked up a football before to be in the uh, second coming of Joe Montana. Um, no, but I think I think the Bears are for real. I think they're the best. Team. I mean, it's they have the best record, but I think they have a, I think they have a real real chance. Like I, I would make them the favorite to win that division right now. I know we get enamored every year with Rodgers, and but you just watching Green Bay play, they're not that good. Even even with him at full strength, I mean, he's kind of. You take him off the team, and they're like two and fourteen. So it's like the LeBron James factor. <laughs> yeah, they got they got a, they got about three receivers that might not play this week. And and, and but and Rogers tried to give that boost to defense. He he praised their defense, uh, but then again, it was only Buffalo. He, he said the offense has to pick it up uh, like our defense, but that was just versus Buffalo. They they didn't really stop anybody. They they had that Minnesota game, and they and they couldn't stop them. And that turned into a tie. So yeah. I, I I have to be convinced about Green Bay. Their defense usually so, gets softer as the as the season goes on. The win against Buffalo doesn't prove anything, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it's what you're supposed to yeah. do. But but going back to the Bears, yeah, the, that's the thing that sticks out. It's because what we talked about at the top of the show. How many teams have a legit shutdown defense? All, all these fifty forty games what's going to win for you in the end is uh, a team with, with corners that that can stop somebody that can rush the pass uh, that, that, that that can make some stops that's what's going to that's what's going to get you to uh, through in the playoffs i mean in all honesty i mean there's two probably two teams in the league right that, that, <laughs> Chicago, that, them, them in jacksonville right and that's it yeah well uh, i i like philly in, in in the clutch yeah yeah not this week but yeah, they, they, they played. 
they 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 they've proven it. But I, what I'm saying is, teams that their defense is good enough to kind of carry a bad offense, like Philly. Yep. Philly, when they're clicking on all cylinders, I mean they they've got both, right? I don't think their defense is as good as the Jags or the Bears, but their offense is a lot better when they're when 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 they're um, when when they're clicking on all cylinders. The I mean the Jags. The Jags' offense is very trick or treat, with mostly uh, mostly trick, but that defense is ferocious. And the Bears, I think, are kind of in a similar a similar boat there, where if, if Trubisky doesn't like lose the game, kind of like Bortles, um, they can hang yeah. with anybody. Yep. And so we have uh, we have we have the Bears. This Bears are on the bye week this week, and um, speaking of the Jags, the Jags took care of business against the Jets. And they're going to Kansas City this week. So let's talk about Kansas City first. So Monday night, Chiefs at Broncos. You alluded to it earlier. Um, first time we've seen Mahomes right in the, um, in the spotlight in the nationally televised game. And also against a real defense. The Broncos have a real defense. A real defense on the road, under the bright lights, when things weren't going his way. And I don't know what we can say about what he did in the fourth quarter that hasn't already been said, but I just want to know how this kid, how this kid sat behind Alex Smith all last year. It's in the, I mean, he is a, he is a super stud, super stud. He seems like, like, you know, he has the tools, right? He's got the huge arm. He's got mobility. He seems to have the, the swagger, but to perform like that under pressure kind of kicks it up even another notch for me. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all aboard the train. The train might have already left the station, but I'm hanging on. What do you, what, what do you think? Oh, uh, I was looking that back and, uh, and I was cursing uh, my Giants for taking uh, Evan Engram uh, over, over him in the draft. I was, I was like, how did, how do, how do we miss this kid, man? And you I'm don't sure need, a lot you don't of need other... a quarterback. That was, uh, the Giants don't need a quarterback. That's well, anyway, anyway, <laughs> I, I'm not alone in that because uh, what did he go? Uh, Nine. Uh, yeah, so other teams passed on him too. So. <laughs> I'm yeah, not I sure mean, those... what a great class, though. That's the other yeah. thing. I mean, Mahomes and Watson. Watson went after Mahomes, and then Trubisky. I mean, that's one heck of a one heck of a quarterback class. Yeah. No, no, no regrets there with uh, with Watson, but. Uh, uh, other teams that that passed on him got, got to be thinking how we how they missed out, but yeah, he's got the total package. And you could say what you want. I mean, re- re- about Reed, but he clearly, clearly, the guy knows how to coach offense. You saw what he did with with McNabb. Oh yeah, Andy Reed. He, he's just got to get whatever uh, whatever seems to fall apart with him in the playoffs, uh, and he's just got to take that next step. Uh, otherwise, there's no qualms with Andy Reed. Uh, he would have still been a Philly just after a while when you, when you keep falling short in the playoffs, you gotta, you gotta save your best uh, stuff for the playoffs and we'll, we'll see how that comes. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be tough to beat. I mean, even, even though their defense actually played better in this game <laughs> than they have been, but yeah, but still at, at the end, uh, cousins had a, had a shot, had an open shot. An open receiver, right at, right at the yeah, right at the uh, yeah. Sorry, Keenum, right at the end. I mean, come on, that was, oh man, there, there was an open receiver. The, the the game was right there, and, and that was you know Keenum with no with no timeouts and everything, and you, and you know that's all you got to do is protect the end zone, and 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 right there on the sidelines he had him. So. Demarius, yep. Yeah. You know we don't talk about this stuff too much, but I had a vest, vested interest in Demarius catching that pass and scoring a touchdown, and um, and, and and even on hook and ladder play they could have got burned on. So they, yeah, their defense has to, has to tighten up. I um I was I was cursing Keenum. Keenum's I mean no two ways about it. Keenum hasn't been good. I mean he he was supposed to be an upgrade on what they had. Yeah. I guess he's been a little bit of one, but I, I don't know what they expect. Like, Keenum's scrappy, but he's he, but then again, you're talking about a guy who he wasn't even drafted, right? Right, he was not drafted. Yeah, so, I mean, he's scrappy. He put up big numbers for Minnesota. Yeah, last he's scrappy. Year. He keeps you in there, but if if you want to if you want to put the game on on his arm, that, that that's tough. Man. 
It is. Well, they have a running game, though. Both those, oh, both but, but rookie Lindsay running backs is, look uh, good. Lindsey looks Lindsay, like a wicked yes. steal. I mean, he was undrafted too. I mean, he's good. He's he's a yeah. good player, and that, that's a, that's another reason why you shouldn't take a, a running back with the second pick when you could just get one that's undrafted and to rush for more yards. That's, uh... I mean, if. if Saquon, I think, is a generational talent. Nah, he's really, know, really kidding. good. No, but you're right. Nope, nope. You're right. Nah. The, the argument, the, you, you don't make an argument. It's not an argument against Saquon, the player. Nah, it's just that, an argument about what's available at the position, right? Like yeah. you can, you could have yeah, drafted you, Darnold. Right? It seems like every year you pull they, they pull it. There's like an undrafted uh, running back, or there's somebody that that, that comes through in a, in a late round. That, that, that winds up leading the league. Even the guy, a breeder, right? He wasn't a high pick. Sixth uh, round, I think. And I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, but they're, they're all, I mean, Kamara was not the third round pick, right? Second or third yeah. round pick. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all over the place. And I mean, especially number two overall, when you don't, when your quarterback's old like that, like, cause you could draft, you could draft Darnold and then have any one of a number of, a number of guys as your, yeah. as your oh. running back. Right. Yeah, we'll see. Right now, it doesn't look too good, but there'll, there'll be more QBs coming out next year. So it might be. You know, it, it's not like it's this the only year where there's quarterbacks coming out. It's, of course, of course. Yeah. So as I as I as I was mentioning, a couple a few some really good games this week, and this is this is a really really intriguing one. I'd like it even better if it was in Jacksonville, but Jacksonville at Kansas City, one o'clock on Sunday. One of the two. I mean. The, it's tough to say that there's a best offense in the NFL because Kansas City and the Rams are one in one A, but one of the two is definitely the best offense in the AFC against the best defense in the NFL. Um, definitely could be a preview for a, for a playoff game. How do you see it playing out? I'm going to go with the uh, home cooking. Uh, the Chiefs are at home. The Chiefs I'm are sorry. at home, yes. I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I've been uh, skeptical on on the Chiefs, but that that, that Monday night game, uh, when, seeing Mister Mahomes uh, in action, uh, won me over. So I'm I'm gonna go with the home cooking with the Chiefs. With yeah. the, the Chiefs. I think they'll win the game too. I think it might actually look a lot like that Monday night game. With uh, I mean, you know, Jacksonville's fired up. Ramsey's already been trash talking uh, Tyree Hill at the press. He called him a kick returner. He said, "I you made the Pro Bowl as a kick returner. I made it at my real position. So, so, so that should be a uh, that that should definitely be a fun one. Um, you're yeah, because see- uh, I would uh, I would I, I might go with, I would lean towards the Jags if for but Fournette looks like he's going to be banged up all year. He's definitely not playing in in this one. I mean, T.J. Yeldon's a good player, and especially against the Chief, against the Chiefs where." You know, you can run on them, and you can, the guys can catch passes out of the backfield. He's pretty, um, he's pretty versatile. So I don't think they'll miss Fournette too much in this game. But here's my prediction: I think, I think the Chiefs win, kind of a you know twenty twenty four twenty one kind of game. And I think Mahomes throws his first intercept interception of the se- of, of of the season. But I think that I just think I just don't think the Jags offense. They're going to need a performance like they had against the Pats. And they're certainly capable against the shit Kansas City defense. But in yeah, KC... That was, that was at home, though. I think, uh, yeah, Bortles, uh, you know, the, the crowd's going to uh, be loud. KC's a tough be... place to play. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, we agree for a change. Well, hey, you know what? You, we, that means anybody... Great minds uh, think any, alike any, sometimes. Anybody listening, uh, bet the house on the Jags. Uh. <laughs> Absolutely. Money <laughs> line. But, <laughs> yeah, so we have a, a number of number of games co- this week. We've talked about a few of them. Oakland at the Chargers. Um, so kind of a fun fact I read today is that the Chargers are pumping in crowd noise into, pra- into practice. To, simula- wow. to simulate, <laughs> to simulate, even though they're home, so that's <laughs> that 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 gives you the warm and fuzzies. They think there's going to be a lot of Oakland fans uh, making the uh, making the trip <laughs> south. <laughs> Pretty. I crazy. can. Uh, the, yeah, the, yeah. The Chargers situation is so confusing. Uh, you know, where they're playing in a temporary 
a little band box and uh, they're going to be they're going to be sharing the stadium with the Rams. Uh, when does that start? Next year or? Yes, I believe so. Uh, yeah. So the, yeah, that whole situation is confusing. All right. So well, why don't we? Let's do. We're not going to predict all the games, but let's just do kind of a lightning round. We'll do five games. All right. So. We already uh, – Jacksonville at Kansas City, both your experts here choose the Chiefs. As John said, you probably want to go the other way. Um, Atlanta at Pittsburgh, Look, you can go first for this one. Oh, man. I, I, the, the Steelers have been killing me all year. But I'm, I'm just – but I, I'm going to go with them because I don't like what I see out of Atlanta's uh, defense, whether it's the injuries or just being soft in general, but – so something's going on in Atlanta. At the beginning of the year, it was it was like, oh, we're doomed because of our uh, Sarkees and our play calling. Uh, but now they got their their red zone uh, shit together with the uh, with the uh, Ridley uh, scoring a lot of touchdowns, and plus they get a uh, Freeman back. Yep, Freeman's back this week. Yeah, so their offense is rolling, but their defense, uh, whether it's the injuries or a sieve. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm going to say that uh, Pittsburgh gets that shit together this week and, and pulls it through, which, once again, you probably want to bet the house on the Falcons because <laughs> I've been picking – I've been on the Pittsburgh train, and uh, it's, it's, it's been derailing so far. Yeah, I'm going to give them one more chance too, John. Steelers, if the game was in Atlanta, I would overwhelmingly pick the Falcons. But Ben's great at home. This seems like a perfect matchup for him. And the Steelers' yeah, defense, the Steelers too, defense is just a little bit better. But <laughs> Sunday know. night, kind of, uh, yeah, can Ben have uh, two bad games at home? That was a shocker. Uh, ben usually, Ben's usually off like that, but he games on the road. But right. he, he had a, he had a stunningly bad uh, home game. Yeah, but, and you know the, the are you, uh, you and get, that was just the Ravens too, who he usually saves his best for. So that was a little shocking. He does. Those rivalry games can just be funny sometimes. He could chalk yeah. it up a little to that, I think. I mean, he just played like shit. I mean, just being honest about it, he just had a yeah. bad game. I mean, it's not like the Ravens' defense. They played They played well. They played very well, especially in the second half. I think they haven't given up a touchdown in the second half all season, which is pretty Yeah, impressive. but he was missing wide open receivers. He was badly, yes. he was badly yes. off. All right, so we're, we're in agreement for, for two here. I don't know, no, I don't know what's happening. So let's, uh, let's go. Let's, speaking of the Ravens, Baltimore at Cleveland. I'm going to go first on this one. I think Baltimore, I, I, I like Baltimore in this game. I can see the case for Cleveland. Cleveland's been playing well, but I see another I see another close loss for the Browns, which is going to continue to happen until they fire Hugh Jackson. You're up. I'm up. Uh, I, I think I contemplated this one for like six hours when I turned in the, uh, the old picks, and, and uh, I, th- I think I'm going to lean towards the Browns. All right. Uh, the, the Ravens... Uh, yeah, we finally disagree on something, but yeah, the, I'm just going with the, the Ravens' uh, road, road mojo isn't gonna isn't gonna help now two weeks in a row, and uh, and and, Cle- and Cleveland, I, I don't, yeah, it's got to, you, you hate to blame it all on the coach, but it's like, come on, when you got a guy Chubb uh, touched the ball three times and, and got over a hundred yards, you might want to feed the guy a little more, and, and instead of having uh, Baker just uh, you know lay back and fling it fifty times in, in his uh, first uh, start. Agreed. So, Agreed. I mean, they were the better team against the Raiders. Yeah, they absolutely yeah. shouldn't have lost that game. And it's all on Jackson. That's my. And I think Cleveland's defense is going to be played better. Which uh, they were. They were a little disappointed, man. Maybe they just got tired, but they they, they fell apart a little versus the versus the Raiders uh, towards the end. The defense. Yeah, it was good, Derek Carr. He shows up about once every six weeks, so we'll see him again, maybe week ten or eleven. <laughs> all right. Next up. Minnesota at Philly. I think you already uh, you already told us you're, uh, you're yeah, on the Philly yeah. oh, train a lot of for this one. This week. I, 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 I could I could see the Vikings uh, coming through with with the revenge from from last year's absolute friggin' no show in, in a championship game. But uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards Philly, which, which I do most of the time. I, I think Philly's got the mojo. They got Alshon Jeffrey back. Uh, Wentz is uh, feeling his way back. And plus, I, I just love. I just love their uh, core of uh, running backs that they bring in and out of there, from Clement to, to Ajay. When one's hurt, they got a little small wood action. So they, they mix it up. And Minnesota's uh, offense is too one-dimensional. It's a, they have no running game whatsoever. And if, and if you let Cousins uh, rear back for 50, 60 times, uh, um, there's going to be a few times where it doesn't work out for you. 
Smallwood is kind of uh, one, he's he's a guy close to, he's close to your heart, right, Chad? Yeah, that was my nickname in high school, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm with you. But, I'm I'm with you on Philly. All the reasons you said, uh, dome team coming east, playing outside, um, every, everything you said, everything you said. I think I and I think they're going to lose, and then the alarms are really going to start sounding in Minnesota. And yeah, they could to, be to uh, they to... could be cruising for a uh, cru- cruising for uh, for a bruising. Yeah, but I don't see anybody in that division running away unless uh, unless the Bears keep it up. Right. Oh, I agree. And I mean, even I mean, the Bears probably aren't going twelve and four or anything like that. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the the, the, the one that three and one is no close. good. Is no good. So. Yeah, but that's a red flag. If their defense uh, plays like they did versus the Rams, uh, pull up with that, put up a. Uh, performance like that two weeks in a row, and that's a red flag for uh, Zimmer. Who I'm, I'm pretty high on, so uh, I, I think they, I think uh, they'll have a better performance on defense. But I just think Philly is gonna, it's a tough gonna, game. gonna pull it out. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, we'll close the show with uh, Dallas at Houston, the battle for Texas. Who wow. <laughs> it's a tough game. It's Sunday night football, tough game. Yeah, to call. Dallas. Dallas is. If there's like one guy that's expendable, that's that's inexpendable in the whole league. It's got to be Sean Lee. Their, their defense, for the eight games that Sean Lee plays, their, their, their defense is so much different with him in there. But without him, not, not so much. Uh, but uh, Ezekiel Elliott, how, how great is he? The, the, he, 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 saved them, he saved them single-handedly. With the, he's the whole with, team. With he, I mean, he's the whole he offense. Saved, he saved them as a receiver. That, that was like a wide receiver type catch. He saved them on that on that winning uh, field goal drive last week. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Dallas uh, and, and Houston. O- O'Brien was just playing for a tie that game. Uh, they're lucky they even got one in, in the win column. O- O'Brien's kind of kind of like a dead man walking. Uh, yeah, I'm very disappointed in Houston. Very disappointed. I like Dallas here too. I just I just don't think Houston can. Um... He's yeah, getting, even can stop Houston, the run. Frankly, <laughs> like Houston died. even even got what back and uh, and Clowney back that they're, they're rushing the passer that they, they got Watson back and and, and there's still there's something missing they even got they, they got these two great receivers and and, and even for the, the first time the, the kid played he he won the game for him that kid cutie cutie kiki was very, yeah very impressive and, and, and still they had the they needed a friggin gift from Indy just to just to get in, in the W so when, when you got all that going I'm sorry you hate to blame him you hate to throw the coach uh, under the bus. The Houston defense was the Houston defense was the perfect antidote for Luck's bum shoulder. He looked yeah. great. He looked like it was 2014. <laughs> and and even on the play that won him the game, that fourth down, that was, it was just a bad pass by Luck. The guy was open. It was just a rare bad pass by Luck. Yeah. All right, so we're, we're we're in agreement there, John. Clocking in at just under an hour here. That's how we do. Quick and dirty. Uh, I just want to make, uh, you know, take one cheap shot uh, at, at, at your, your boy, your ex assistant coach, Bill O'Brien. The only reason why I got the job is because, oh, they said he, they caught him on camera standing up to Brady and yelling at Brady. And uh, they said, oh, this guy's going to be a great coach. He's got balls to, to yell at Brady. That was the only reason why he got the stupid job. And uh, the, the, this year he's going to be, he's going to be uh, working about as much as I do uh, at this time next year. Completely agree, and um, yeah, not a Bill, Bill O'Brien, uh, right up in the Hugh Jackson Hall of Fame. I agree. Ah, that's not nice, but uh, I'm sorry. So, John, enjoy the games this week. I'm sure we'll be uh, we'll be talking, and um, to all our to all our listeners, all six of them. I heard we're up to six now. All six of our listeners. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks, you guys. You got anything to plug besides the column? Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Uh, I, I know it's okay. a tough. Uh, I know it's. I know it's a busy Wednesday when you got the, the uh, the walk around the web by the great Glenn Butler, and also that's when uh, Stacy's uh, deep diva dive uh, drops. So, so uh, in between those two, uh, just take five ten minutes and, uh, and and check me out and, and give any feedback. Uh, you know, I, I don't give any uh, scathing opinions. It's just more like observations on what happens. Check it out, guys. All right, for John, I'm the cowboy, and we're out. NFL, baby. Kick off. We love it. (laughs) Peace.